Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me tremendous pleasure to welcome Lieutenant General Khonswam Himalaya Singh, who is one of my dearest friends. I have known him since the days he joined his original battalion, which was two Rajput. Khonswam is from Imphal. He is from a place slightly away from Imphal, actually. And uh, I have had the pleasure of literally growing up with Khonswam. He is India's first serving, the first general to have uh, risen to that rank from the Northeast, a product of the Tenic School in uh, Golpara. And uh, he was later in the National Defense Academy, where he later was a battalion commander as well. Anyway, he has written a remarkable book called The Making of a General, which I unfortunately am yet to read because it's not yet out in print, but it is. it should be in another week or so. Consum, welcome aboard to the Valley of Words. It's such a privilege to have you with us here today. And uh, we are looking forward to getting to hear from you what the book is all about a little bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's start with you giving, I think it's best if you give a slight since it's an autobiography, you give us a bit of a uh, fill in on what the overall book is all about, and then we'll talk about it. Thank you, Kunal, for the kind words. The book is about, uh, it's about my life, a memoir, recollecting the 40 years of army life, and also the childhood days in Manipur and compare and contrast of what I saw as a child in Manipur 40 years back and today's Manipur and the Northeast. That is the primary uh, content of this book. The focus perhaps is on the leadership issues the grooming of young officers, middle level officers, and the senior officers in the army, as I experienced it. It is not something that I, uh, it should be the, that, you know, the, uh, everything has been based on my own experience and my own uh, example. In the 40 years journey, some good things and many uh, many lessons to be learned in the army and in the service and i thought it was good to share and pass on the experiences of my 40 years with the future generations of the army's leadership as well as in the civil here in the northeast and in manipur well, you've written a book before, Romancing the LOC. I, I, I really think that's one hell of a title to have given any book. But, uh, Kate, you you were commissioned into Kali Chindi to Rajput, which is perhaps one of the most famous battalions in the country. It uh, distinguished itself time and again, and it was also at the forefront of the 1962 operations. I still remember when you arrived at Punch as a second lieutenant, looking ramrod straight, straight in front, not understanding a word of what the CEO was saying. I think it was Kelu Verma. And uh, uh, take us through the initial period into Rajput. I mean, it was it's such a delightful battalion to have been. My, my father is also from it, so I mean, I, I I was born in it. So you joined it. So take us through Kali uh, a little bit, the initial years as far as the book is concerned. I spent 17 years in Kali Chindi Palton, to Rajput, 17 years before I took over command of 27 Rajput. I was commissioned into the battalion Kali Chindi in Punch, 1978. What a fantastic battalion and glorious history. And also, I got to learn so many, uh, uh, the profession that I am in, I think the founding 
uh, the the founding days of my life in the army was groomed in Kali Chindi Palton with such uh, uh, such a great uh, you know past as far as uh, professionalism is concerned. Not a, there has not been a single war in the last two hundred years of its raising that battalion has not fought all over the world. Therefore, I'm singularly lucky to have been born in this battalion and also prepared me for the future responsibilities. And grateful to all the Jawans, the JCOs and officers who groomed me to be what I am today. And uh, I owe a lot to the unit. Were you the first uh, Manipuri to ever come in? No, I am the second, uh, third Manipuri, in fact. Uh, prior to my commissioning in the regiment, there have been two other officers into the Rajput regiment. Uh, but unfortunately, they could not command any unit. Uh, but uh, so far, uh, I thought um, uh, in the regiment, we have from Manipur a total of uh, six officers. I was the third, and there are three more officers who are now serving in the regiment. I think Romeo went on to even command uh, two Rajput, if I remember correctly. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Yeah. So then, when you moved to which year did you move to 27 Rajput? Raj, 27 was a new raising at that time, if I remember correctly. 27 was uh, uh, about eight year old battalion when I took over in 1996. I took over the battalion uh, and commanded 27 Rasput for three and a half years, about five, six months, five months in Delhi, two and a half years in three infantry division in Leh Ladakh and Shiachen Glacier. And of course, thereafter, I took the battalion to Bikaner after the Kargil War and uh, a glorious uh, achievement by the battalion in Shiachen and during Kargil War. That's putting it very mildly uh, about a glorious achievement because uh, I must tell the viewers that 27 Rajput probably fought one of the most incredible actions of the Kargil War. It was they were stationed uh, a little north of Turtuk, between Turtuk and the Siachen Glacier, and they were tasked with capturing 5700. And, uh, when the battalion was given the task under KH's leadership, the army had told them that we are willing to accept 100 casualties. And this was a virtual, he will describe it a little better than me, but it was a virtual 85 degree climb up to the top. And this battalion actually captured 5700, which was held by the Pakistanis without a single casualty. They lost three men in the subsequent fire which came, but in the actual attack, it is almost unparalleled what 27 Rajput pulled off. How about giving us a quick encapsulated version of that case? Thank you, Kunal. 0. 0.5770 was the most dominating height where Pakistanis have in, had intruded during 1999 in in south in in the north of uh, uh, Shog Valley, basically. Pakistani Musarraf had planned to threaten Siachen Glacier from the south. While his, our, our main attention was towards Kargil. So in that, in his endeavor to threaten Siachen Glacier from the south, it was primarily the 5770 which was the fulcrum of all his designs, that is, enemy's designs, and the task to prevent capture, and also, if held, to capture it from Pakistanis was given to my battalion. As you rightly said, this was the only action during the Kargil War where it was a silent attack, silent attack means basically without artillery. 
It was an attack during daytime, daytime day assault. It was the only attack where not a single casualty was uh, uh, on our side. So that, and also it was perhaps the highest uh, post this was captured from the Pakistanis, 19,200 feet. So in that, uh, this thing I owe uh, this achievement to the very, very brave soldiers of my battalion, 27 Rasput, and each one of them was uh, uh, a gem to me and is something that I'll uh, remember and also release all my life, the finest uh, period of my professional life. You also had a dog, 27 oh, Rajput, when you were in that paper, weren't you? Does she find mention in the book or does she not? Or oh, was it a he? Yes. Her, her name is PC. So she's married and to she your book? Was, uh, yes, yes. You'll find a photograph of her also in the book. <laughs> She was, she was the savior of many of our troops in, while in Shachin Glacier. She used to and carry, she used to carry uh, you know, mail, personal mail. She used to carry medicines and she used to carry um, batteries for our survival in those posts. And uh, 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 in fact, she was awarded the Army Chief's Commendation Card on my recommendation. And Pakis would fire at her. You know, uh, whenever she used to walk around, Pakis used to be after her rather than our troops. They wanted to kill her, <laughs> but she was very smart. Yeah. How lovely is that? In fact, uh... Who was the company commander? Chima, right? In uh, 5700? Uh, I think uh, 5770. The assault, the assault company commander, assault company commander was Major Navzi, Captain Navdeep Singh Chima, after whom 5770 has been named as Navdeep Top. I recommended him for a Parambir Chakra. And however, unfortunately, he didn't get that high uh, uh, this because I suspect that most of the actions of our unit were not known in uh, in the higher in the in the army headquarters. I I suppose. I can fill you up on that. They didn't want to admit at that point of time that the fighting had spread from Kargil right up to Tortu. Initially, they did talk about it, and then th that's why they downplayed it. And unfortunate, this kind of politics is, some, is the reality of life. But anyway, what 27 Rajput achieved yeah. in the Kargil operations is, is absolutely superb and yeah. unsurpassable. And I think a lot of it had to do Thank with you. your leadership. Well, case looks Thank almost you. the Thank same you. as it did when he was in IMA and in, in, when he joined the Army. And who Dhavi is a three-star general who's retired. He's even served in the Manipur government subsequently and uh, uh, what exactly do you now plan to do KH? you you had a stint with the uh, with the state government and how do you play, see yourself vis-a-vis uh, -vis the northeast today because you can play a very very major role especially with the naga talks and various other issues which are now coming up which hopefully will help bind this country even more closely together It's a very important issue that you have raised. Uh, I was chairman of the Public Service Commission. There's a constitutional uh, you know, assignment, not really part of the Manipur government, but it's a constitutional body. After that, uh, I'm right now I'm teaching in a university. The subject is National Security Studies as a visiting faculty. I intend, I, I, I intend uh, uh, writing more. This book was primarily aimed at um, uh, igniting the minds of the young people in Manipur uh, in particular and Northeastern uh, region in general. The people of the Northeast are, uh, are very, very aspirational. 
in Manipur, there have been allegations of being a failed state. Many of the states in Northeast are not in a very, very healthy socioeconomic um, socio uh, dimension. So what I intend to do in the coming years is primarily engage in pursuits of um, socioeconomic and security issues related to Northeast will be my area of interest. In fact, the Department of National Security Studies in Central University of Manipur, uh, I uh, had uh, some hand in it in inaugurating that, the first of its kind in Eastern India. So aim was to focus on the security issues of Northeastern states and Manipur in particular. Have you also uh, touched upon the history of the early history of Manipur and especially the events relating to the British, uh, you know, the, the rebellion in 1891? And you know, we've had some outstanding people who have been freedom fighters. I mean, the, you know, unfortunately, uh, that part of our, our Indian history is completely lost. So, have you also touched upon it in your book a little bit? Uh, yes, Kunal. I have just touched upon it, not gone into the details of it, because I have only written what is relevant in today's time as I saw it. Uh, since uh, the book is a memoir, uh, I have primarily focused on uh, my experience and my perspective in the backdrop of historical past. So to that extent, I have touched upon the British area and how it affected today's uh, uh, situation in the Northeast and in Manipur and how to go ahead in future is what the uh, book uh, talks about. You also commanded 25 division in Rajori and 16 corps in Nagrota. So you've been sort of, you had the entire uh, border right up till Poonch under your command, I think if I'm, I, I think your 16 core tenure was also one of the most volatile ones where there was a lot of firing, etc., on the border. And from there, you moved on to the uh, infantry school, if I remember correctly, and uh, uh, retired from there. But uh, what what you have you also spent a lot of time in Poonch, not only as a youngster but also as a I think a company officer later when you when the battalion was back there or whatever. Uh, what, how much, the, the problems in JNK, the problems in Manipur, how, what is your perception of, um, you know, how, how important is it for all of us to really start thinking in terms of fortress India rather than, you know, isolated, I'm from here, I'm from there. Uh, what's your perception of that? Very briefly, uh, the LOC, the line of control in JNK, is as well as you know AGPL, Siachen, all this what is happening in the LOC is related to entire uh, the idea or the identity crisis, which is which Pakistan is facing. Their concept is that keep the line of control alive, keep the Kashmir issue alive, then only Pakistan uh, can be a stable country. That is their theory. That is why it will be long haul before we come to any kind of a peace in the line of control. As regards Jammu and Kashmir and uh, Northeast, I have only one line to say that Jammu and Kashmir has not understood the idea of India. And while in the Northeast, India has not yet understood the idea of Northeast. So that is the paradox uh, that I would like to uh, put across. And uh, how it can be, this thing is a uh, big exercise uh, in uh, nation building, but only one 
uh, uh, quick point I will say is that one has to focus on uh, focus on identity in uh, notice, but we should not allow it to graduate to some kind of a secessionist ideas, you know, by encouraging identity of these people. That is the only thing that I look at in a futuristic manner. Well, I think we, we, we you know, I could go on with you talking about the book for endlessly. But right now, we'll wait for it to hit the stand, Skates. Uh, my my compliments. Have you got a, have you got a copy with you, uh, uh, advanced copy, which you can hold up? Uh, I have. Uh, I have the. Uh, I can just show you that this is uh, this is the book. Can you see? Hold it a little back, back a little further away from the camera. Take it towards yourself. Uh, okay. Towards yourself. More towards yeah. yourself. Uh, a little to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, we are all looking yeah. forward to seeing it in uh, in various book stands, in various uh, shops, etc., airports, etc. Because I'm sure it's going to be a very, very important book. Not just because it's your story, but because it's a story of somebody who's grown up in a place like Tobol, made his way right up to the top, and it's been. And knowing you, I think it'll be a very, very interesting book. Uh, just as we wind up, you're such a good storyteller. Tell the audience about that story of two Rajput cats sleeping on the LOC and passing the BD. I just love that story. Let's hear it from you. <laughs> uh, Kunal, actually, I've included it in one para there. I'm sure it's there. But in you the must book. tell the audience exactly yeah, what yeah, happened. Nobody is going to it. You know, uh, this, the, the area of uh, LOC near Nosara. It used to be full of these wild animals. And, uh, and uh, in fact, your dad, uh, uh, General uh, Verma, also had come for a shikar there and near the you LOC. Talk about those <laughs> <laughs> so, those days are so, so, yeah. So, uh, this incident, what happened? I was the company commander. And one of the posts, which is bang on the LOC, that in the middle of the night, I got a frantic call that someone has been hurt by a, a wild animal. So I decided to go and have a look. I thought, you know, uh, I wanted to see the condition. It was just about 20 minutes walk uh, from my headquarters where I was. So when I went there, I found that uh, one guy, uh, he has been clawed by a bear. So I asked him, how did he, how did it happen? What had actually happened was at night, our boys have a habit of passing the beaties from, you know, cigarette from one to another and back. So this was going on at night and the rightmost guy who was there, did not realize that on his right was a bear lying there and so he passed it on to him and that bear who is very scared of fire he got scared and clawed his face and ran away that was what 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 happened in that night you know i can i can recollect so many things about that and luckily yeah, the boy was safe yeah i'm so glad Anyway, we're really looking forward to reading your book, Gage. And uh, thank you so much for talking to us this uh, this afternoon. And uh, all the very best for your book. And for I, I hope you keep writing because, I mean, you know, there's so much in the Northeast, which if, when it comes from you in particular, it will be of such added value, especially in the days to come where the Northeast is going to play a very, very major role in the overall development of India. Thank you very much, General Khonsom Himalaya Singh. It's Kunal. always a Thank pleasure to talk much. to you. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kunal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.